Okay, David Nichols here, CEO of Loop, and I'm excited to share a new machine concept that we've come up with called the Track Packer. If this is the first time that you're being introduced to Loop, you should know that the purpose of our company is to revolutionize automation. There's a lot of game-changing technologies out there just waiting to be put to use in manufacturing. And we're excited about that, and we're always looking for ways to innovate and improve the way things are done. And the way that we do that is with something called a new machine concept. So what is a new machine concept? So in capital letters, it's our design process for taking a cocktail napkin sketch and shaping that, forming that into a workable concept for a new machine design. It's a collaborative process between the expert at our clients and the concept engineers here at Loop. You're looking at me there on the left. We've got Nathan and Jonathan on the right, and uh, Carl's been a huge participant in this process as well. They're the stars of our concept team. Here's the timeline for an NMC, new machine concept. It all starts off with an introduction. Somehow or another, we bump into each other. Maybe it's at a conference. Maybe we see each other online. We want to meet fellow revolutionaries. The reason that we want to meet fellow revolutionaries is because fellow revolutionaries are a great source of new inspiration. Talking about different ideas, get in front of a whiteboard, coming up with a cocktail napkin sketch. That is something that we're always really excited to do. When that happens, when someone comes up with that cocktail napkin sketch, we do something called a discovery meeting. So that's a collaborative brainstorm. It's where we get all of the smart people together in one room. Somebody brings it up and say, hey, there's this idea I've been kicking around. I've been thinking about digging into it. And everybody uh, kind of comes together, gets that in their head. That's what we call a discovery. And then often our team goes away, does some really deep work on the process, building simulations, checking into the details, making bill of materials. All of that comes together in what we call a new machine concept. And that's what I'll be sharing with you today. So where did the inspiration for this machine come from? About 18 months ago, uh, both me and Carl, Carl Robrock, uh, co-founder of Loop, were over in Austria for BNR's big global conference. And they shared some new technology about what they were going to be bringing to market uh, about track systems. And we spent a few days hearing all about this amazing new technology. We couldn't wait to dig into it. And after the conference, we spent the day in Munich at the Deutsches Museum looking at 200 years of engineering history and different machines that had com come about and what was special about them and amazing. And uh, that night at dinner, we got to talking about how tracks could be used in different packaging concepts. And that brings us to the question of why do anything at all? Why, what is there to do here? And the thinking at the time, and it's only gotten stronger since then, is that CPG companies, their products don't last as long as they used to. They have different channels. They want to make slight variations. They want to do shorter runs with less waste in between because they don't want to have to wait six months to retool their line. They don't even want to have to wait 30 minutes to change over between products because there's so much variation. Uh, that they're facing. There's so many different experiments and different ideas that they want to try to reach new consumers, uh, to, to respond to what market needs are, are coming out. They need to be able to move really fast and their production systems need to be able to accommodate that. So we feel like there's got to be a way to accommodate a wide variety of product heights, different diameters, different case packing arrangements, hitting really high throughputs, but also reducing the changeover. Typical changeover on a machine that does this kind of process might be 30 minutes. Uh, there's different types of hard tooling, different types of mechanical adjustments that need to be made. There's different types of end effectors that need to be swapped out. We think we could take that from 30 minutes down to even just a few seconds. And this is how we're gonna do it. It's called Track Packer. Now, this is a reference design. It's something that we put together and we've been working on. We're really excited about it. Loop is not a machine builder, but we wanna show what you can do with revolutionary technologies when you put them to work in different industries. So this is our concept of how a packaging machine could be put together. Uh, it's made up of a few important pieces. First off, it's got a universal feed mechanism. So if you're gonna be taking in a lot of different kinds of products, how is the machine and the mechanics of the machine gonna be built to accommodate that? Uh, core to the process and really the inspiration for rethinking this machine was around the concept of high, high speed shuttle transport. And then of course, we don't wanna to have to be changing out tooling. So 
is there a way to make the end of arm tooling dynamic enough? Uh, and, and we think that there is, and I'll, I'll be explaining that in just a minute. What ends up happening is that this also reduces the footprint of the machine by two thirds. So where there might be a sequence of machines that do this process all in a row, taking up a lot of space on the floor, we're able to compress that into a really small space uh, with the robot at the center of the cell and the tracks uh, built around it. Some details about the control architecture. Everything on this machine is run from a single real-time control PC. It's up in the upper left here, that orange box in APC 910. It's a BNR product that is both a PLC, a motion controller, a robot controller, a safety controller. It does all of the control tasks of the machine. All the software lives in one place. It's got a 24 inch HMI hanging off of it. It's got some IO systems and it, this cell also uses an ABB robot uh, completely off the shelf IRC5 robot controller controlled over TCP IP. And you can see on the right side here, the main loop, which is where the product flows and then a divert loop where if there is a shuttle that needs to be taken out of service or if there's a mispick, if the product doesn't make it on the shuttle quite right or maybe there's an empty one, we can pull that one off to the side and then re uh, re reinsert it into the flow. Uh, later on when there's a, a right space or a time for, for that to happen. We've also got some small DC powered servo motors and uh, up on the end effector so that the end effector tooling itself can accommodate uh, the differences in the products or the difference in the case sizes that we wanna pack. The star of the show in this machine is really the Acapaz track. And the reason that we're excited about the technology is because it really opens up a lot of possibilities for revolutionizing the process. And it starts from the idea that you can actively control individual products at extremely high speeds. So anywhere that that product needs to be placed, we can put, put it there and we can get it there extremely quickly. And even though this shows a closed loop only, You'll see later on, we've got ways of diverting that at high speed under mechanical guidance so that we can build different process flows, different divert loops, things like that. What you see on the bottom is the way that the shuttles are coming in to be positioned under the end effector tooling. There's a shift move that happens to get the next row of product. Products go into the boxes and, and off they go and the product repeats. So Acapaz track is really the star of the show here. But it's not enough to just have shuttle placement. All of the mechanics of the machine need to be made universal so they can accommodate differences in product sizes. So if you start at the top right here, you can see an animation. Uh, it's really just a cartoon, but you get the general idea of a standard buffer and conveyance feeding into this machine, products sliding laterally down onto the shuttles that are synchronized to where the, the fixed con, uh, conventional conveyance is coming in. And if you look down below that, you can see with the green, blue, and red it's showing different product diameters sitting in that cradle so that regardless of what the diameter or the height of the product is, the shuttle tooling passively can accept a variety of those different things. You can also see that on the in-feed mechanism here, we have pairs of uh, red, blue, and green parts. And then when it gets all the way around to the other side where the robot's picking it up, you can see these tiny servo motors up here are made uh, to position the different grippers on a rack and pinion so that the different case sizes and the different uh, number of cases in a row, whether that's a four pack or a six pack can be basically instantly changed over without having to drop off a tool and pick up a different one. Okay, looks really cool. I'm sure you're interested in it, but what about the cost? Uh, and we, in all of our new machine concepts, we do a cost analysis because it's one thing to come up with something that's really fast and cool. It's another thing to make it work economically. When you look at the cost analysis of this, what you see is the majority of the cost of this type of machine concept is made up of the track components. And that's because if you think of the track components, they're both a mechanical guidance mechanism and a linear motor. So each of those sections of track is filled with copper coils that are controlling the shuttles individually. There's a lot of servo drives inside there. There's a lot of copper and mechanics that go inside there. And so that's why it ends up being a large component of the cost. But we think based on our, our throughput studies, based on the amount of changeover that we can do, based on the economic advantage of being able to 
run, do extremely short runs of product, we think that that pays for itself in a really short amount of time. You can do the process with a single robot and then uh, some PCs, power supplies, and HMIs. Uh, these are things that, that uh, any machine is going to have. And uh, we think uh, the economic model of this machine uh, really does pencil out especially when you consider the flexibility, the floor space, and all the other throughput advantages that you're gonna achieve with this kind of approach. All right, so here's the shot of the machine in action. Uh, we're really excited. We can't wait to th take the next steps here on this. If you're curious about how new technologies could change the game in your machine or process, please reach out. We'd be really excited to dig in and share and talk about how to revolutionize what you're doing. So thank you very much.